In this video, I'm going to show you my six step protocol that I have used to help many people in my office that have been diagnosed with L4, L5 disc bulge and L5S1 disc bulge. Stay tuned to the end to get through all these six steps. Helping you relieve pain, conquer stress, and supercharge your health the chiropractic way. Hi, my name is Dr. Walter Salubro. I am a chiropractor in Vaughan, Ontario, Canada, and welcome to this video. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through my six step protocol that I've been able to use to help many people get through their discomfort and relieve their chronic pain and get their life back essentially that have suffered with disc bulges in their low back. Now, the first thing I want you to really get is not to give up. I've received a many like hundreds of comments and questions in my videos below in my other disc bulge videos which you can check up here and people are looking for solutions and they're looking for hope and my whole objective with this video is to lead you in the right direction to be able to ask the right questions with your therapist or doctor to make sure that you're getting the right protocol in place for not only just the diagnosis of the disc bulge, which most people get, but also some protocols to help you begin the corrective process and the healing process to get the chronic pain subsided and get your life back to full function. And for many people, one of their big objectives is to eliminate the need for using drugs or depending on drugs. And for many, many people is to eliminate the need for surgery. Now, the next thing I want you to get before I go over the six steps is that there's not one specific way to successfully help someone with disc bulges or treat someone with disc bulges. There's a multitude of different ways. There's different protocols. There's different things that can be done. But the key thing is that something must be done and, and it must be done correctly. So this protocol is just the one that I've been able to successfully use with a lot of people that have had disc bulge complaints and symptoms associated with disc bulges. But there may be other successful ways out there. So it's your objective to really seek the exact precise therapy that you need based on your circumstances based on your case results, based on your clinical presentation, because not one specific way is unique to everybody. That's a very key distinction that I want you to get. Now, the last key thing I want to say that's very important before I get into the six step protocol here that I have for you is that when you're working with the spine, especially the lumbar spine, the lower lumbar spine, but the same is true for the rest of the spine. But we're going to focus on here because that's where most of these disc bulges occur, L405, L5S1, the lower area of the spine. Well, the spine is very intricate. There's vertebra. There are nerves on that come up from the side of the spine. There's a nerve on the inside of the lower lower spine here and the spinal canal called the cauticoine and the spinal cord ends over here. There's ligamentous structures, there's muscles, there's tendons. There is a ton of structures that's feeding a ton of information to the brain. Essentially what that means is that this is a very complex structural entity that goes that's that we have that we're dealing with. So cor correcting the problems associated with disc bulges and, and getting the healing process to, to kickstart is a very intricate, multifaceted um, approach. It requires a multifaceted approach because the spine itself is very, very intricate. So it's not one specific thing you gotta do. There's, there's a multitude of different things that have to be done and in some cases that need to be done in a certain order. So that's what I want to say before I get into the six steps. Now let's get into the six step protocol with number one. Okay, so in my six step uh, protocol that I've used with many of our patients, um, there are certain things that need to be done in a certain order, but sometimes I'll jump around from one order to another. The whole point is that this whole, all six steps are required at some point in person's care plan. Some will typically come in with a lot of pain, uh, a lot of discomfort in their lower back, maybe in their glute or hip area, and maybe pain traveling down the bottom of the leg. Each different clinical presentation requires a different approach, analysis and approach. So um, it may be in a particular order, it may not, but all these six protocols is something that we do to help our patients in an overall objective. The other thing too is that healing takes time. You can't expect to have massive degenerative changes in your, in your lower lumbar spine and uh, disc bulges and disc damage and expect the actual healing process to occur over a matter of weeks, maybe months. It may take longer than that, but when the right things are done, in, in the long run, people tend to get better when they're done correctly. So step number one, as a chiropractor, one of the first things that I do is assess the spine, whether it's a neural spinal assessment in the office or x-ray analysis, and we determine where the spinal misalignments are, also called vertebral subluxations. And step number one for me in my office is to begin to correct the structural distortions in the spine, AKA vertebral subluxations. Oftentimes when people have chronic degenerative discs or 
symptoms associated with chronic disc bulges is because of a structural misalignment or distortion on the spine that needs to be corrected with specific scientific chiropractic adjustments to the spine, especially the sacral part of the spine, the sacrum, the pelvic region, and the lower lumbar vertebra. So spinal adjustments and spinal correction is very, very key. It's often missed with many people, especially if they haven't had chiropractic care. This component is often missed. I can't tell you many times someone's come to my office and they've been to other types of offices, whether it's physiotherapy, massage, acupuncture, sometimes some other types of um, rehab offices, and they've been under care for such a long time, and I've asked them if they've ever had their spine corrected or adjusted, and the answer is no in many cases, and in some cases just maybe once or twice or once in a while. That's not good enough. The spine needs to be assessed and corrected structurally with spinal uh, chiropractic adjustments to improve the structural alignment to the spine and reduce the distortion on the disc. Because oftentimes that distortion that's causing an inflammatory process in the disc that's creating a whole bunch of noxious chemicals that elicits that pain response in the body, whether it's a local pain response or a referral pain response. So no amount of pain relief type therapy, no amount of drugs, hot packs, cold packs, massage will correct the spinal distortion that's insulting that disc and causing that chronic damage and chronic inflammation. So step number one, is checking the spine for misalignments or subluxations and beginning the corrective process. Okay, this is step number two. Stretching and mobility exercises, and possibly not in that order. So at this point, once we begin the structural correction of the spine and begin to restore some spinal function, and the actual pain in the local area of the back and even the legs begin to reduce, I begin to introduce some home exercises, which are typically stretching, so, and also mobility. And uh, again, not in that order, it can be mobility first or stretching, or stretching first and mobility. It's based on the person's clinical presentation. Stretching, we want the patient to stretch their glute muscles and lower back muscles, knee to chest stretches we call them, maybe even their piriformis muscle, their hamstring and quad muscles because they attach to the pelvis and can create distortions on the spine or vice versa, distortions on the spine can create tightness in the, in the hamstrings and quad muscles. So we need to evaluate that. The piriformis stretch is very, very important because that stretch, uh, that muscle in particular, actually, actually um, when it's really tight, due to distortions on the sacrum can actually irritate the sciatic nerve, which is a nerve that is fed from the lower lumbar nerves that goes into the leg. So that can oftentimes be associated with the disc bulge irritation. So those are the stretches that I'll give my patients. With mobility exercises, very, very important. You wanna to begin to get uh, mobility in the lower lumbar spine where the discs are. Now, this is the one key thing I want you to understand about discs, is by the time you're an adult, there's no more blood supply to the disc. So how does it get its nutrients? How does it get its, its hydration? The only way that this stays healthy by getting nutrients and hydration is with mobility, mobility. Reduced mobility leads to degeneration in your disc and, and dries out and eventually gets damaged in the long run. Mobility adds health to the disc. There's a process called imbibition, which means drawing in of nutrients and fluid into the disc, which only occurs in the discs by mobility. Mobility is health to this. So we give patients a pelvic tilting type exercises at home. And in our office, we have something called the wobble chair, which is a very specific device that people sit on and do this elaborate motion on their, on their uh, uh, lower lumbar spine to help hydrate that disc. So stretching exercises and mobility exercises, I begin to introduce as we're adjusting and correcting the spine. Again, this is still in process. And after the inflammatory stage is being reduced, which means now the patient can tolerate more of this active work at home and also possibly in our office as well because now there's reduced inflammation and of course reduced pain. That's beginning to happen. Okay, step number three in the protocol. Posture. Posture needs to be assessed. That's very, very important. As a corrective care chiropractor, we don't just look at the spinal alignment and correct the individual spinal alignment problems or global spinal alignment problems, but we're also working on posture. So we evaluate posture through observation, through an app that we have called Posture Screen Mobile on our iPad, and we get a baseline of the posture. Based on that, we do some corrective postural corrective techniques, which is part of global adjustments of the, the body and uh, the posture, and then we give people some postural exercises 
exercises. Now, you need to understand that posture exercises cannot be done during the acute phase or when a person has a lot of pain in their lower uh, lumbar spine. So this, this is typically introduced um, after, of course, the stretching and mobility exercises and after the uh, patient has is able to tolerate more active um, things at home because now the pains begin to reduce in the, in the lumbar spine, okay? And again, all this is happening as we're continuing to adjust and correct the spine. So posture exercises, what do I mean, mean by that? You need to really understand that the whole person needs to be evaluated, not just the local disc problem in the lower lumbar spine. And that's the biggest concern I have with with therapies that just focus on relieving pain locally. If you don't look at the big picture, you can't help that person significantly. So what I do in my office, because I'm a corrective care style chiropractor, is we'll look at someone's posture. If, and you can't see this fully here, but just imagine that if my hips are forward, my torso, rib cage is back, and my head is forward, what well, is a tremendous amount of, of impact and loading that's occurring in my lower lumbar spine right now, and I have a good spine, I have no disc bulges, and I can feel the stress already down here because it's being compacted and, ex and extended, and it's stuck like that, and the forces of gravity are acting on it, that if you don't begin to restore this posture, then whatever it is that you're doing with the disc bulge is not gonna help, so that needs to be introduced. So we'll assess someone's posture, and then we'll begin postural corrective adjustments in the office, and then we'll also send home, uh, send people home with postural exercises to help restore that normal neutral alignment of the spine as best as we can. All right, here we go, coming right along. Here's step number four, traction. Now, there's different types of traction. There's decompression traction, which is axial traction of the spine, basically distracting the spine from head to head to foot, essentially in that direction. And then there's also sagittal style traction, which is realigning spinal curves into the normal natural alignment. So both may be warranted, both have their uses. I don't do too much decompression style traction in my office. Um, so if that's required, we'll send that out to another chiropractor or doctor that does that type of therapy. And people have, me, have told me that, that it does have its merits and it does work. And I've heard from other practitioners and doctor friends of mine that do it, and there is some merits to that. The type of traction that we work on is called sagittal traction, which essentially is improving the actual alignment of, of, of the spine. So the spine has these normal curvy alignments from the side, and based on the x-ray analysis, if we, if we find that, that the lower lumbar spine lost its curve, and essentially it should be, it should be elliptical shape, maybe it's lost its elliptical shape, or it's reversed, or there's a distortion on its alignment in the lower area where the sacrum is, then we'll begin to give traction devices at, that people can do at home to improve that curve, and also traction in our office as well to help improve that curve in the lower lumbar spine. And in doing so, it helps to, re, to remove the, the, um, the uh, added pressure on the spine from that abnormal spinal alignment. So that's traction. Now, again, this is more advanced structural rehab work that cannot be done at the very beginning when someone has massive amount of pain locally in the back or referral down the leg. So it needs to be done as that pain is beginning to subside and they can begin to tolerate this. All the while we're still doing spinal corrections and the patient's still working on the stretching and mobility and then we're also working on the posture exercises and uh, uh, and, and his postural adjust uh, adjusting techniques as well. So that's traction. So the next step in the six step protocol, number five, is introducing exercises to help with balance and proprioception training. So what the heck does that mean? First of all, you need to understand that when there is damage to the structures of a joint, it can be an extremity joint, like a shoulder, elbow, or ankle, or even the joints of the spine, those structures begin to lose their sense of position. That's called proprioception. Proprioception is your brain's ability to know where your body is in space. So technically, I can have you close your eyes, put your hand in front of your, in front of your body and above, and then with your eyes closed, ask you where your hand's located, and because of all the sensors in your, the joint position sensors in your hand, wrist, elbow, shoulders, your brain knows to answer you to say that your hand, your right hand is above you, to the front and to the right. That's called proprioception. So when there's damage to a joint, proprioception gets disrupted. When it gets disrupted, there's bad information from that joint position sense from the joints in the body to the brain, and bad information from the brain back to the body. Give you an example. 
you ever known someone that sprained their ankle or if you sprained your ankle, even if it was five or 10 years ago, if I ask you to stand on that ankle that's been sprained in the past and it has not been properly rehabilitated, especially with balance and proprioception training, then you'll find that you're gonna wobble on that ankle compared to the good one. That's a lack of proprioception training in that joint. So the same thing occurs in the lumbar spine. When there's a disruption in the lumbar spine, a distortion biomechanically that's insulting the joints and the discs, it, it needs to be, the proprioception needs to be retrained. So the joints in the body are sending good information with that training to the brain and the brain sending good information back to the joints and the functionality of the joints in the spine tends to improve. So that's very, very important. So some of the, some of the techniques that we use for balance training is walking on a straight line. So you can't see it here, but imagine someone is with their, you know, no shoes and they're walking on a straight line like this. So they're, they're walking heel to toe on a straight line. We got them to go forward, then we got them to go backward, touching heel to toe. It looks like it's easy, but it's challenging for people that have had uh, damage to their joints, whether it's in their spine or in their extremities. Then we get people to do single leg stance. Again, you're not gonna see it here, but single leg stance, one knee's up to my hip level, standing on um, uh, over here like this. And then other things we'll do is we'll get them to balance on a wobble board to retrain the positions uh, of their sense, the drum position sensors in their spine, in their joints, and get good information to the brain and good information back into those structures. So that's balance and proprioception training. You need to also get that this cannot be done at the very beginning when someone has a massive amount of pain because of the chronic inflammatory response that's been going on in their spine. So this can only be introduced later on, again, after we've done introduce the spinal uh, corrective adjustments, after we've introduced the stretching and mobility, all this is still going on, after we've introduced the postural corrective adjustments and, and exercises, and then you know the traction. So they're still doing all this and now getting proprioception and balance training. Okay, next step, number six, last but not least is core stability exercises. And you're probably asking, when is Dr. Walter gonna introduce core training? Well, we start now. So also get that when someone has a massive amount of pain due to that chronic inflammation in the back, which is referring pain down the leg if it's, if it's there, you can't start introducing advanced core strength and exercise at that point. The patient will not do them. The compliance will be low. They're just not ready for it. So this has got to be introduced when we begin to get some structural stability on the spine. We're getting some stretching and mobility going on. Posture is beginning to improve. Right? Traction and sagittal alignment of the spine is beginning to improve. Balance and proprioception has been introduced for training. Now we can talk about core stability. Why? Because we need something to package everything all together and basically retrain the spine and the back to hold all of that good information there. And that's with training the stability and, and training the core muscles, which are the abdominal muscles, which are the paraspinal muscles in the back, the gluteal muscles, and those core stability muscles, so the glutes, these are all very important things to train. So some, I'm not gonna get into all of them right now, maybe I'll do another video with it, but we start to introduce extension exercises, right? We introduce uh, Superman exercises, you know, they're prone doing Superman exercises. We introduce some planks, whether it's um, um, on, on the hands and, and knees and you're doing a plank or a prone plank, uh, some side planks, if a person can do some advanced side planks and even some bridges. So we start to introduce these core stability exercises to basically package and hold everything together and stabilize the corrections that we've done through this whole time. Okay, there you have it. This is the six step protocol that I've used with many of my patients in my office that have come in with disc bulge complaints on their lumbar spine and uh, symptoms associated with that, whether it's local back pain or leg pain. And essentially, they've had their life disrupted, their quality of life disrupted, their functionality, their work, their home life, their leisure life has all been disrupted because of the damage and pain associated with chronic disc bulges with this L405L5S1. So the key thing is, like you said, I said at the beginning of the video, and you should go, watch it, uh, go back and watch it again, is that it's a multifaceted approach to correction and healing. It's not just one thing. So it's multifaceted. So like I said, there's many ways to approach um, the, the correction uh, associated with uh, disc bulges and the healing process associated with disc bulges. This is the way that I've done it with our patients. They've done really well with it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you found this useful, throw some thumbs up down there. And uh, also, if uh, you think this is something important for someone else to hear, just share it with them as well. Okay. This is Dr. Walter Slubril. 
coming to you from uh, Vaughn, Ontario. And if you have any questions, again, ask me below. I answer all questions whenever I can get to them. And I appreciate you um, following me and watching our YouTube channel here. If uh, you like this, click on the subscribe button below and also hit that notification bell so you get more videos coming your way. Dr. Walter here. Talk to you soon. To learn more about how corrective chiropractic care at Back to Health Chiropractic Center can help you with your chronic pain problem, visit www.ibthcc.com. Back to Health Chiropractic Center is located at 20 Cranston Park Avenue, number 6, Vaughan, Ontario, L6A2W2.